My name is Jimmy. What's up, you guys? Jimmy here, back at you with another review for The Flash. And this is the 11th episode, and the episode is titled The Sound and the Fury. Now, in this episode, um, it brings in someone from Wells' past, um, Hartley Rathaway. Uh, who was uh, his protege, one of the people involved with the particle accelerator. But uh, he's not out for your typical revenge, because he has some, a pair of gloves that allows him to manipulate sound waves. In the comics, he's, he is the Pied Piper, and he even calls himself this in the episode. Now, we do get to see flashbacks of it, and he really is, he really is a douche. But the whole entire reason he wanted to do this, not just to get back at Wells, because um, Wells was warned about the, about the explosion. He didn't want to, um, you know, he didn't want to uh, believe it. But we all know by now his real reason for not believing in Hartley. And he even got him kicked out. Yeah, so he's pretty much back for revenge. Not, I guess not just for himself, but for the people that have been, that have been hurt in bad ways. Yeah. And I guess uh, he kind of used this revenge as a way of playing chess, because him and Wells, I guess, played chess in the flashbacks. So, um, you know, he wanted to have one fight with, uh, <clears throat> have a fight with the Flash. But Wells thought, oh, he wants him to tell the truth, so he did a press conference of it. No, no, that's not what he wanted. So, uh, they were able to all work together to be able to take him down, and they were able to, uh, he was in some type of street, uh, maybe some type of bridge or highway of some sort, uh, I guess using his gloves, because at first they did catch him, but it was all the trick for him to get some, some, uh, some stuff on the Flash, I guess to be able to hurt him, to literally hurt Hurt him like hell with his um with this with the sounds, which um, you know they were able to use the satellites inside of the car, be able to make his um, gloves malfunction, and he was grabbing onto it, and boom, they blew up in his hands and scar. I mean, didn't burn his hands, but scarred his hands. And at the end of the episode. Uh, it, you know, and it kind of shows that Cisco in the flashbacks was always competing with him. So it was, it was partially has a Wells type of episode, but you know, Cisco, it had something to do with him because I guess in a way he was jealous. They were jealous of each other, and he says, "You are going to let me out because I know where Ronnie Raymond is and what happened to him." So it looks like next week we're going to see the full we're going to see the full story on him becoming Firestorm. Which that means we got to see get to officially see the other half for Firestorm. Which I think that's really cool because this I've been really excited to see Firestorm in the show. I mean, I really I'd say he's uh, one of those DC characters that I really like. I mean, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a fan, but I really love his abilities. You know, but um, that's pretty much it for the episode. I have to say beforehand, I didn't know about the Pied Piper, so uh, it's kind of cool to, you know, villains I didn't know about before because he was a rogue in the comics. But he eventually turned hero. So maybe we could possibly see that in the future of the show. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's always that if word when it comes to these types of things. I think it's always cool to see some type of DC uh, character 
like no matter if it's just some regular character or a villain that you've never heard of in a TV show, it kind of gets you some information, allows you to say, huh, I wonder who this is. So I thought that was really cool. Um, another interesting thing, um, uh, the Royal Flesh Gang was uh, in uh, Central City. I thought that was interesting. We haven't seen them in what, like two years? So it was kind of interesting to see them back in um, this uh, CWDC universe. I mean, you know, I mean, Royal Flush Gang in comparison to the comics, totally different. Like, I don't think there would ever be any idea of them getting being like we have seen them in the past. But, yeah. Um, but, uh, that's pretty much it for my thoughts. I'm actually looking forward to next week's episode because, one, we're probably going to get stuff about this Project Firestorm and what happened to Ronnie. And, plus, we get to see some more of Pie Piper because he's going to be in next week's episode. I mean, it doesn't take an idiot to know that, you know, and uh, also, uh, you know, I did get a question from watching this episode. I mean, we all know now that uh, Wells is Reverse Flash, but the one thing I don't understand is it's like he does not have, he's losing his speed, which that would probably be the reason why he has that little harness type of thing on the suit. Maybe he's losing his powers. And for the first time in the show, they finally call it the Speed Force. Been wanting this for a while, considering that The Flash is one of my favorite DC characters. DC heroes, that is. So it was nice to finally see them call it that. But that's pretty much it for uh, my thoughts on the episode. Also, in more recent news, I mean, we all know, a lot of us already know that um, Supergirl, for her TV show, has been cast, and it, that's Melissa Benoist. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the last name wrong, but she is another person from Glee. Which, uh, when I first saw who who she was, I was like, why is she a brunette? But not, uh, maybe like a week, maybe a little over a week ago, um, it was uh, shown off her with blonde hair. You know, and, and from what I can see in tweets, both, um, both characters from The Flash and Arrow, they are both excited to have her. They're like saying that she's in good hands. Hopefully, we'll get to hearing some confirmations about Supergirl being in the shared universe. Which I would really love to see that. Because it, like I've said before, it shouldn't all be on the CW. It should be spread out. Just so, you know, I mean, it just makes more, that much more of a sense. Because that helps everyone. That'll, that'll help CBS. If the Teen Titans gets in the shared universe, it will help TNT. It'll help all of them with the shared universe. But that's pretty much it on my thoughts. Let me know down below your thoughts and opinions on this episode. And also, your thoughts on Supergirl in general. Just let me know down below. And also, if any of you guys want to play the new newly released game, Dying Light, with me, I will be on PS4, and it's game underscore excitement. You know, just in case you want to, you want someone to play with. But, as always, my name's Jimmy, and until next time, bye.